Hello? One second. There we go. How are you, Tim? All good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you as well. Yeah, any plans for today? Not at all, actually. I'm going to the gym in a bit and then just chill out. I'm still a bit tired from the journey from Wexford. Yeah, congratulations. Big result. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a good game as well. Yeah, yeah. I just watched the highlights there um, yesterday and it looked like a yeah. good game. Um, but yeah, excellent, especially as you say, it's such a big journey. So um, great start to the season. It's been a um, little bit of a blip last week, but very good start. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, we knew we're not gonna we're not gonna be unbeaten for the whole season. So, um, but we were obviously still disappointed with the result last week because we just we just didn't perform well. Um, but obviously, it felt good to get that back last Friday. Yeah, absolutely, and it's just going to lift the spirits, I suppose, moving into the the next several games in the season. So, yeah, it's been good from a, a fans' perspective. Um, yeah. Things seem very positive. You have a a new man, your um, second manager now at Harps, um, Darren Murphy. How has that um, been going this season under him? Um, well, actually, I think everybody everybody loves Merv and everybody enjoys it. Um, I think there were a few people like the likes of Jamie or me, where Merv was a very very big part for us staying, because um, we were talking to the to the board at the end of last year, and we were they were kind of like, look, what do you think about the manager and all that? And we were all like, look, if Murph is staying, there's a massive chance that we are staying as well, yeah, because um, see, he was there for the whole of last season as well, and everybody got got along with him very good. Um, so we were all buzzing when when we all found out that Merv is going to take the job. Yeah, absolutely. He seems like, um, from what I've seen his interviews, he seems like a bit of a character. Um, seems like he's got a good yeah. sort of presence about him. Um, seems a little bit different. I'll be honest to um, Dave Rogers. Seems like there's a different yeah. sort of approach. Do you want to maybe um, explain maybe the different styles and how you find that um, this season? Um, it is it is definitely completely different. They're both completely different characters. Um, where Dave would have been like a very very emotional guy. I, I'm not saying Murph isn't, but Murph is Murph is a very very calm person. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, he can he can lose his head as well yeah. if he needs if he needs to. But um, he's a, he's a very very calm person. He gives the the players a lot of confidence. Um, tells them that they, that he believes in us and um yeah it's just it's just completely different than than it was last year yeah that's interesting um interesting to hear and it i think again from a fan's perspective it's been um interesting to watch um and you know fingers crossed you guys kick on um and have another um yeah just kick on and have a really really good season it is of course your second season at harps um why don't we just talk about that a little bit? You you went through a little bit of a tough time uh, last year. You picked up a knee injury, I believe. Do you yeah. want to just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it was. I actually picked it up. It must have been when I felt it the first time my in my first week over here. So I came over, trained. And in the first training session, I felt something on my, what I thought was my um, shin muscle. So okay. the muscle right above, right above the shin. And I always had a bit problems with it because I picked up a nerve damage on it years ago. So it always felt a bit tickly, kind of kind of hard to explain. And then I came over here. And to be honest with you, I never played on AstroTurf before because yeah. back in Germany, it was always grass. Um, so I thought, all right, it's just like tightening up from, from the Astro. But then it must have been one preseason game in Northern Ireland. I don't remember the, the team we played. But I felt it in the warm up, and I heard a crack in my knee, and I was like, "Oh my god, what's that?" And then, um, yeah, it turned out to be a torn meniscus. And um, funny enough, the last, the the first game of last year, um, of last year's season against Galway at home, I went out on a Thursday. I think we were training, yeah, to try it one more time. And I think after two minutes, I went to to Dave Rogers and I went like, "Look, I can't even walk." And then um, he was like, all right, just rest and see how you feel tomorrow morning. And then I woke up on Friday, match day, and I called him and I was like, look, I don't care what it is with money. I want to play. 
So I kept playing, I think I played 23 or 24 games. And then it just, I think my last game was at home against Cove, I think, where I conceded two goals, where I wouldn't go, they were proper mistakes from me. But I thought, look, if I'd be fit, save them. And then it just came to a point where I was like, look, it doesn't make sense. I'm not giving a team what I want to give them. And I, I just was in, in proper pain. I, did, I, I didn't even really train the whole of last year because they were always just trying to get me ready for a Friday. Um, and then, yeah, obviously we, we had the surgery. And since then, I've, I haven't felt anything no more. So happy days. Yeah, no, absolutely. I remember um, that was kind of the, the whispers around Finn Park, the rumors that you were playing with quite a severe knee injury. Yeah. So it's a real reflection of your character that you were able to sort of uh, persevere and endure that. And yeah. so you just got the meniscus then tidied up. Um, um, they, they took it out. Okay. Because, um, the first scan I had, the first scan I had was before the season started, and the doctors were already like, "Look, you need surgery at some point, definitely. You could, you could work around it with like loads of rehab stuff, and I've done it. I've, I've been in the gym last year, you know, every single day, and done my rehab stuff, and it helped out. And I, th I actually think it helped me for the time after the surgery because the muscles around it, I, I was trying to strengthen pretty much six months before the surgery. So um, that helped me definitely recovering quicker, but it was just, it was just so much pain and I took so many painkillers and it, it was just not worth it at the end. Yeah. And as I said that before, um, I think if I wouldn't have been over here, I would have possibly not played because I just mm -hmm. came over here and like I, I wanted to play obviously a new club. And then the longer the season went on, the more I wanted to play because obviously then it, it came the time when my granddad passed away last year. And like all the support I've got from, from the people around Harps was just, I, I still can't believe it. It was absolutely unbelievable. So I was like, look, I want to, I want to play for as long as I can. But then unfortunately it came to the point where I was like, look, I can't, I can't walk no more. I can't kick. I don't feel, I don't feel the speed that I would normally have. So that, that was the story about the knee. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, um, I've actually just had my own knee issues I also yeah. tore my meniscus um, this time last year and my uh, ACL, but um, uh, obviously, so obviously I'm only playing amateur football, so the physical demands aren't the same as they are with you. But one of the things uh, I credit to getting back to playing my standard of football so quickly um, was the gym work, building up the strength yeah. and the rehab. I think it's important. I think it's important. Um, Maybe a lot of, I know you're quite into the gym and into your strength training um, to supplement your football, but do you yeah. want to maybe just go into that a little bit of detail? Because I'm a big believer in it. And I think for anyone else that's maybe suffering, you know, niggles or injuries or severe injuries, in fact, yeah. um, do you want to maybe just talk about how important the rehab and the strength work is? Yeah, it is. I think, so I'm coming I'd say if I come if I compare German football to obviously I spent two years in England and now over here the German football is way less physical than it is over here and but I was all, always into the gym as you said not just not just to build up power and strength but to to prevent injuries as well and I think that that always worked because except of the meniscus I never I never really had something I mean, I had a broken skull, but that was that was something that was something else that wasn't like like a typical muscle injury or something. I never had a muscle injury or anything, so I think I'm doing I think I'm doing a good job. But I think, especially for us as as, as goalkeepers, especially me, because I'm I'd say I'm by far the smallest goalkeeper in the first two divisions in Ireland. I think that is that is very important that that I make up for it with speed explosiveness and and strength as well because obviously i'm not i'm not the tallest so i need to be explosive and that's why I'm, I'm i'm spending a lot of time in the gym and i think it's very very important yeah absolutely so you just touched there on your height uh what height are you at scared to well, ask it. um no i'm um 179 centimeters which is i think i believe five foot ten okay yeah i think five foot ten yeah, and myself, I'm probably in and around that height as well. Um, yeah. And I think uh, what doesn't help maybe is the fact you are quite well built and explosive. Sometimes yeah. that can actually make you look smaller. I've always yeah. found in my experience as well. I agree. 
And, you know, when people start, you know, underestimating your height even more then because yeah. of your, you know, your, um, how you're put together. But, yeah. um, do you think that's something that's held you back within your career, your height? Well, that, that, that's kind of hard to say. Cause if, if I'm being completely honest with you, if somebody would have asked me, look, do you want to change it? Could I be now wake up tomorrow morning and be six foot three or something? I would say no. Cause I like my, I like my height. And I think I personally think if you, if you make up for, for your height and like, be explosive be powerful i think we've got a lot of advantages as well because we are normally pretty quick pretty flexible um so i'm i'm actually very happy with my height i must say yeah. and, I, and i like the fact that people would be like and that's actually the reason why after germany i wanted to go to england because my agent i made the decision to leave borussia and my agent called me and said look where do you want to play because he was he was pretty confident that I don't want to play in Germany because it's just one club for me in Germany and I wouldn't play for any other club over there. So I went like, look, I want to go to England, and he went, mate, why don't you go to Italy and Spain? And I was like, no, I want to go to England. And he was like, look, everybody over there is going to talk about your height. And I was like, that's why I want to go over there because I want to show that that height doesn't matter. Obviously, you, you you can't be too small for it, but I think I'm I'm still on a all right height um and I, I like that that the people look at it and be like oh yeah but but for high balls crosses set pieces and all that stuff but i just like to to prove people wrong i guess yeah and i think that's a fantastic mindset to have because i know even my own experiences it's always something that's lingering in your mind yeah. and people making comments and trying to write you off but from you know i haven't watched a lot of harps this year but the games yeah. especially in person I watched last year um you know you really stood out and i think this is something that when you do have a taller goalkeeper they can use their height as a bit of a crutch so yeah. they kind of land on that whereas when i was watching you what really impressed me was your technical ability you're comfortable with the ball at your feet um and you know you have to make up i suppose with decision making and instincts Definitely. and it's one of them things i think for any young goalkeepers listening that are maybe worried or have got comments about their height you know you have to try and use that not let it hold you back first and foremost but work around that and as you say you you said it's sort of work to your advantage in a way yeah. and i think that's really really important for young goalkeepers um to hear absolutely yeah. so you also um you spoke about of course you are german you've had an interest in cv from what i've been reading online um i suppose you said your main club in germany is bruce munch and gladbach is that yes, exactly. have i have i got the german pronunciation right that actually was pretty impressive i must say <laughs> yeah that's probably all my days playing fifa i've probably been able to uh <laughs> get it get a little bit accurate so um you were there for quite some time basically most of your youth career um yeah. how, how was that experience a massive club within german football yeah. um well i'm i'm from the city of munching so i was growing up over there and i think i signed for them when i was six or seven okay some or um, seven i think i was um and and played there pretty much from from the under from the under nines to the under 19s then left for one year i think and came back and played there for another three years i think um it's my it's my hometown club my my dad my whole family are massive supporters my granddad was a huge supporter as well so i was growing up I think I've been in the stadium for the first time when I was three or four years of age with my dad. So I was always a, a yeah, diehard supporter, kind of. I mean, the boys in the house that I'm living with are always like, oh, Jesus, they, I'm not going to talk to him on Saturday because he's going to watch <laughs> Mention Um, But that was obviously a dream and, and it was my dream to, to play for the club. But um, looking back, I mean, I needed to be realistic. I was um, planning... Well, the club was planning to to kind of make me the new number one um, when Ter Stegen had rumors going to Barcelona. But then I broke my skull and that just that just threw me away for for a couple, for actually one and a half or two years until I was clean to play again. Um, and then, as I said, like then I went to to the Nike Academy in England, 
because I was sponsored by that time from Nike and they they heard about the injury and they were like, look, if you want to come to us, come to us, play here for one season and see what happens. Then I played for them for one season and then Borussia called again because they they seen that I was fit again and uh, went back over there. But then Jan Sommer was was there as the number one. And uh, by the way, he's he's my height. Yeah. Um, and he's 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 unbelievable. Um, so yeah, that that didn't really work out. And then um, I just made the decision that I wanted to leave and, and wanted to try something new. And then obviously England came up. Um, been at Wigan then for, for yeah for almost two years. But when I went over, I had a few other English clubs that were interested. Then I went over to Wigan, but then the problem was that they went into, how's it called? Administration, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. So they, so they couldn't sign any player from outside of Europe. They got a new owner, but then Brexit came in. So Brexit was the next thing that stopped me. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I ended up over here. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems like, you know, you've had quite the journey there. Um, a couple of tough yeah. setbacks. You, t- you talked about um, you got an injury to your skull. Um, yeah. You know, without, you know, maybe digging too deep. Do you want to maybe talk about that a little bit? What happened there? Um, it, it happened in a game. I, I don't really remember anything, but I don't remember anything at all. But um, I've seen videos of it. I was I was going up to catch a cross and um, had a defender in front of me and a striker behind me. And the striker went up and um, smashed his elbow against my neck. And apparently I lost control in the air because on the video you can just see how I'm like, kind of falling over the defender that was standing in front of me and landing with the back of my head first. My God. Um, and, and the body basically just just falls after after I land with my head and then I'm just on the floor shaking for, for quite a bit. I mean, God bless, I can't remember anything. I, I remember the pain the weeks and the months after because it was, it was very bad. But um, I ended up having the wrong treatment as well. I got the wrong diagnosis by the, by the hospital back home. Um, so I ended up in a yeah in a pretty dangerous situation actually, and um, having some doctors saying, look, we're not sure if he's gonna if he's gonna make it back to to being a proper athlete again. Um, I mean, I made it back, but um, that, yeah. that was definitely a very 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 tough time. Yeah, and what you must have been early twenties, maybe a bit yeah. younger. Yeah, than I was. That. Yeah, early twenties. I must have been. I think I was actually young. I must have been 19, I think. Okay, yeah. And, you know, um, I suppose, you know, at that stage, football is your whole identity. Being yeah. a goalkeeper um, is your whole identity. You've built your life around that. You know, maybe for the listeners, do you want to talk about, you know, obviously you've dealt with serious physical pain there and you're probably yeah. just relieved to come away, um, you know, in good health, I suppose, in yeah. regard. But can you want to talk about that mental side of it, how that was actually, you know, you probably had your doubts about whether you're going to get back to playing recreational football, regardless of, re- of even high-level football. Do you want to just talk yeah. about that side of it? See, I, I think that time was was more difficult for my family because I don't know what it was with me, but it almost seemed like, without disrespecting the doctors that then treated me, Everything they said about, oh, we don't know about your recovery and all that stuff, it kind of seemed like I, like I didn't even listen to them. I just had a mindset of like, I was always pretty confident, I must say. That might be because of the height, because everybody told me from a young age, look, you've got no chance. You're way too small for a goalkeeper. Um, where I kind of built a confidence, I guess, where I was like, look, what, I, any, what anybody says, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to be confident. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, when... Murph, for example, tells me something or people that I really respect. I obviously listen to them and try to improve. But let's say the people that that doubt me, I, I don't really listen to them. That was that was kind of the same with, with the head injury where I was like, look, whatever they say, I'm going to make it back to full fitness, 100%. I was, just, I was just picturing myself in my head, like being back on pitch again, catching balls again. So I was always very, very positive. And I think that that actually helped in the long run. Yeah, no, I love that. I think that's great. Like for anyone listening, um, you know, if you want to be in, in, in any any av- or sorry avenue in life, you need that sort of single single mindedness, relentlessness, and yeah. I think that's a really important message that you've, you know, um, you've you've kind of not listened to anyone else. You've kind of know yourself and your heart and hearts that you can you could get back and 
listen, the, the proof's in the pudding there. You, you went on and proved it and got back to be playing professional football. So, again, yeah. it's a real testament um, of your character. Um, so you, you did name drop a couple of goalkeepers there as well. Um, yeah. I'm a big Ter Stegen fan. I actually would yeah. have started following him. He probably broke into Munchen Gladbach when he was about 18, 19. He um, was, yeah. He made, his, he made his first game when he was 18. Yeah, so he was, I was a big fan of him. He was like, yeah. you know, um, someone that I loved. Uh, and then Jan Sommer as well, who, you know, was, went on, played at, at the highest level, of course, is yeah. a fantastic goalkeeper. Do you want to talk about your experiences with them? I'd be really interested to hear oh, yeah, um, what that was like. Definitely. Um, with Teste, I think I trained with Teste again since I was 12 or 13, I, I, I think. Um, so I know him from a, from a very, very young age. And, and as you said, I think playing wise and the, the style of the play that he has, he's, he's my favorite goalkeeper. Um, playing out with both feet, being a being a all around goalkeeper, like he can, there's no really weakness in his game. Um, just just the confidence that he plays with, and I I pretty, still watch every game of him and um, speak to him at times. I'm actually still close to Jan Sommer. Um, we were actually planning because obviously Switzerland is going to play Ireland soon. That's right. Yeah, um, we were trying. We were trying to uh, me and Jamie, Jamie Watson, were but planning to travel over because um, he would have sorted those tickets but we've got training so we can't go ah. but um, I'm still I'm still speaking to him pretty much weekly I'd say because I got I ended up being very close to him because as I said that that must have been because of the height thing as well because obviously he's, yeah, yeah. He, I mean it says different it says a different height in, in the internet but yeah. um, he, he's my height but um, we were always talking about it and he liked my my approach of of gym training and and all the other aspects because as i said to you before like i'm i'm trying to to make up for it kind of um so we got along pretty well we'd be doing yoga together we'd be cooking together and all that stuff so i'm very close to him and i i love the way he plays as well and i'm i mean obviously they just got kicked out in the champions league against atletico but um but what he's doing in the in the Serie A in, in Italy is just I'm just so happy for him that at the end of his career, because he's not the youngest no more, that mm -hmm. he's gonna collect some some trophies. So um yeah, I'm, I'm still speaking to to both of them. Yeah. So you're trying to tell me it's not out of the realm of possibilities that we could see Jan Sommer and Finn Park um some Friday evening. It it could happen. It could yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll look forward to that. I'll make sure that's the game <laughs> I'll uh, get to. Um, it's just interesting too. You know, I we spoke there about Ter Stegen. He seems to be someone that, when the conversation is going round about the best goalkeepers in the world, he's a name that actually seems to get um left out quite often. Yeah. I think I think personally, it's probably because Barcelona haven't ha quite had the success um, as a club yeah. the last couple of years. Um, yeah. Do you think, you know, he, to me, I would still categorize him as, you know, at least top five um, goalkeepers, yeah. if not higher. Do you still, would you agree with that or what's your thoughts? 100%. I mean, I mean, for me, he's, he's my favorite goalkeeper. And I would say, if you ask me now, I think he is the best in the world, but that's probably because, I mean, people, obviously Germans would, probably put Manuel Neuer in front of him, which obviously you, you can't deny that that he's unbelievable. But I just like the style of Ter Stegen a bit more. Um, I love the style how Barcelona plays, even though I'm, I'm more of a Real Madrid supporter. But okay. uh, I like the way of Barcelona. But I, I must agree, I think it's purely because Barcelona is not as successful as, as they were known. Um, but I think if, if he wouldn't be their goalkeeper, they would even be less successful. Because I think he's... If you look at Barcelona's style of play for the last years, I think he's the perfect goalkeeper for them. Because as I said, he's if if you if you watch every game and compare it to any other goalkeeper, there's no goalkeeper that is better with his feet than him. He can play with with both uh, with both feet. He's he's just unbelievable. I still remember one one time, and that was in his first season when he came when he came on as an 18 year old. He they were playing or we were playing against Bayern Munich, and he was getting pressed by their striker and had was trying to hit it out of his hands with his right foot, 
he is naturally right footed and then a young boy 18 years of age playing in in the Allianz arena which has like 90,000 people and he just switches his, from his right to his left foot and kicks it out with his left foot and I was just watching and I was like wow that's <laughs> that's unbelievable and um I'd, I'd definitely put him up there with the best in the world. I, I'd say the best. Yeah, no, I agree. I can definitely get behind that argument. I think just in regards to all round game, he's just unbelievable. Um, yeah. So, you know, Germany has been very blessed. They have some obviously unbelievable goalkeepers. Of yeah. course, Oliver Kahn, Manuel Neuer, um, and, and also keepers like, um, was it Adler that was at Hamburg? Yeah. He's going to play a good goal goalkeeper Weidenfeller that was at yeah. uh, Dortmund um, I haven't really followed the Bundesliga quite as much in the last couple of years is there any up and coming German young German goalkeepers that are going to take over do you think from Manuel Neuer or Ter Stegen that really impress you? I'd say there's there's one at the moment um, he's playing for Augsburg, Finn Dahmen I think he's, he's the Germany under 21s goalkeeper as well um, and I think he he's very good. But um, then I think it it went back a bit because, as you said, mm -hmm. the we were very blessed, especially the last the last few years, because you had goalkeepers like Ter Stegen and Leno who came in. That's right. Obviously, Leno now, now at Fulham. Um, before that, you had, you had Manuel Neuer and René Adler who kind of break through at the same time as well. So I, I would say you don't really have that kind of talent at the moment. But saying that, it's hard to get the same talent as Neuer and Testegen because they are yeah. they are both absolutely unbelievable. But I still think Germany is doing a lot of right things at the goalkeeping at the goalkeeper position. Yeah, and it's it was it seemed at one stage you know we even had the likes of Kevin Trapp. He was at um, yeah. PSG for a while. Yeah. It just seemed to be conveyor belt after conveyor belt of top yeah. top quality goalkeepers. But I do think that's an interesting. There is a conversation to be had there. Just in football in general, I do think the standard of goalkeeper has dipped just a little bit. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, things like playing out from the feet have really improved, but it does seem that we're just going through a little bit of uh, a blip at the minute in terms of real legendary um, quality yeah. goalkeepers. So um, it's interesting. I'm sure, though, that'll pick up again in the next four or five years. So yeah. um, obviously you're at Harps now. You went through your journey. Incredible story, really. What, you know, what, how did Harps come about? It's, it's, I know you spoke about your agent, but um, yeah. what was it about Bal Buffet, the bright lights of Bal Buffet that uh, pulled, you, pulled you there? So that happened. I came back um, in the off season before I joined Harps, came back home from, from England and um, I was having talks with my agency and they were like, look, we need to get you somewhere, somewhere out of England to get, I think Brexit, don't ask me for it because I don't understand it, but apparently yeah. Brexit in football works with kind of like a point system. Okay. Yeah. So they were like, look, go somewhere for one year, play there and get, get some points for your Brexit and then get back to, um, to Wigan where, where I used to stay i didn't obviously play for them because i wasn't allowed to but i stayed with them for two years um so we were like look what are we going to do and then um america came up as an idea the the usual stuff in europe like the netherlands and all that stuff but i i just i don't know what it is but i just i just love the countries of the likes of like england scotland ireland i just i just like the people especially the irish to be fair because they're by yeah. far the friendliest of them all <laughs> But um, I was back home and I was actually getting ready to fly to America because I had a few offers over there. And then the night before I was supposed to leave, the goalkeeping coach of Wigan called me and said, look, one of my mates is taking over a club in Ireland. Stay there for half a year, for one year and come back to Wigan. And I was like, look, because I trusted, I trusted my goalkeeping coach at Wigan and I was pretty close to him because I lived, I used to live with him for, I think it was three months during COVID um so i was very close to him actually and i was like look i'm gonna do it so I changed the flight from Ur from america to ireland came over and i think it took me i think i, I arrived at the training grounds 
on my second day over here. And then I think after after five minutes, I already told Dave, I was like, look, whatever you offer me, I'm going to sign. I want to I want to stay here because I just I just fell in love with it over here. And that that went pretty quick as well. I, I just arrived over here, and I remember the first the first day I arrived, it was dark. It was nighttime. I got picked up at the bus station in, in Letter Kenny, drove to the house and I was just looking out and I was like, I was calling my family and I was like, I've got no idea where I am. <laughs> and um, then the next day I went for a walk because we, we weren't training that day. And I went for a walk and I realized that everybody who walked past me was like waving or saying hello or like everybody in the car would just show something. And I called my mom on FaceTime and I was like, mom, what's going on here? Like everybody, everybody says hello and like waves at me. Yeah. And she went like, she on FaceTime, she went like, show me your face. And I showed her my face and she was like, nah, you, you're not funny looking today or, or anything. <laughs> they, must, they must just be nice. And I was like, that, that's unbelievable. Cause Germans can be a bit, we can be a bit difficult. Yeah. Um, so that all of that combined was just like, look, I want to, I want to stay over here. And I still absolutely love it. Yeah. And no, that's fantastic. And, um, you know, obviously Donegal is very rural, um, I think would be an understatement. You then went and did a pre-season out in Ironmore Island. That must yeah. have been at a whole other level. How was that experience? It was because um, we went on the ferry, like drove over there and all that. And um, I think there's a video of it where I'm saying um, from on, on the Harps YouTube channel where I'm going like, oh, I absolutely love it over here. Because I was, I think I turned into an 11 year old because I've seen the pitch yeah. and I was just running on the pitch and I was like, oh, let me train here. And then I was, then I was talking to our physio and I was like, look, if you, if you're not treating someone, could you take a few pictures over here from the training sessions and all that stuff? Because I am, uh, I absolutely loved it over there because it's, it's so different to, to what I'm used to back home. Because I mean, Mönchengladbach isn't the biggest city, but the west of Germany is just when it comes to population, I think there's 30 million people living in yeah. only the west of Germany. Wow. So it's very packed. It's 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 massive. You've all, you've got high buildings everywhere. You don't really have a lot of nature. So um, obviously, Aaron Moore was just mind blowing. It was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, no, it's a fantastic place out there, and you yeah. know, it, it's I'm sure it's an experience. Um, you wouldn't get at any other club. Let's put it like that. Um, exactly, I agree. Yeah. So what um, you have obviously had a good start to the season. You know, I'm sure you're feeling strong, uh, fit and healthy at the minute. What sort of the targets, maybe a few personal targets? And of course, you know, I'm sure team targets is uh, pushing for promotion. Um, do you yeah. want to talk about that just a little bit as well? I think we, our manager doesn't like us to talk about our yeah. goals, our team goals for the season. And I kind of agree because I think still everybody from last year, because I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, last year was tough, not just not just from a personal standpoint with the injury, but for the whole team. Yeah. I mean, we can, we had games where we conceded five, six, seven goals. I mean, as a goalkeeper, that's obviously not, not the nicest thing. But um, I think at the moment, we're just happy that, not just with our results, but that it feels like a team. Like, it, it, it just, the, the atmosphere is just different. I mean, if you look at the game... On Friday, or even a game against Longford, that would have never happened last year. Yeah. Last year, if we would have been down um, away to Longford, two 0 pretty quick into the game, we would have probably ended up losing the game five four six nil. Yeah. But we turned around, and it, and it just seems like even the no the new boys coming in. I mean, I'm living with success. He just adapted, unbelievable to the club and like to the team. They they run for each other. They fight for each other, and that was something. That, that we didn't really had last year. So I think it's just like, as, as Murph says, and, I'm, and I must agree on that with my experience, that looking from game to game, yeah. um, not being... I mean, obviously we were, we were happy after the result, but then it's still, it, again, it's back to watching the game back. What could have we done better, especially in the first half? Um, so it just seems like, like everybody has, has one goal this year and... Um, we're just trying to achieve it and it seems like everybody's is working for it and for me to be completely honest i just want to stay healthy this year because yeah. last year was was absolutely horrible on and off the pitch with with the stuff that was going on in my private life with my granddad and all that stuff so i'm just hoping that i'm going to stay, stay injury free um and i feel that i'm that i'm getting back to to where i was it was actually last week where i, where I was spoken to the physio and i was like look since the surgery 
that's the first time where I feel like I've got my my explosiveness back because obviously it takes a while after after the surgery and it always felt like I, I never had pain after the surgery but it just felt like my left leg wasn't as powerful as it used to be but um, I think I'm I'm really getting there and I'm I just want to stay healthy and and play to my full ability yeah no that's great like and I think as you said it really um it's a testament of the team's characters that they are sort of yeah fighting back and um, getting those results. And it definitely, there seems to be, from a fan's perspective, a different feel um, about the club at the minute, which has yeah. been great to see. We we don't have too long left, and I don't want to keep you too long, because um, I know you've got the gym in a bit, but we've <laughs> got, why don't we just, uh, I'm going to ask you, what's your Mount Rushmore uh, of goalkeepers? This is, can be subjective to you. So top four, maybe an honourable mention for fifth, um, it doesn't have to be who you think's the best, but just people that you admired growing up. Number one has to be Oliver Kahn for me. Yeah. Because um, he was the reason why I ended up being a goalkeeper. Because funny enough, I joined Borussia as a striker. Okay, yeah. Um, but I always loved goalkeeping and I always hated running, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and I just, growing up in Germany, seen Oliver Kahn, especially, to be honest, when he lost his hat, which happened pretty much every second week. Yeah. Um, I, I've just seen myself because I was a bit of a mad one when I was younger. Um, so I must put him on number one. Perfect, yeah. Um, then, Ter Stegen. Yeah. On the third place, Jan Sommer. Jan Sommer, yeah. And then it's getting... Who, who else is there? These are definitely my top three, I'd say. Yeah. And then possibly on, 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 on the fourth place, Ike Casillas, because okay, he, yeah. was, he wasn't the tallest as well. Yeah. And uh, as I said, when I was growing up, it was always like Real Madrid was with Zidane, Beckham, Ronaldo, the old Ronaldo as well. It, it always just seemed like, oh, that, that club is, is magical. So I would put him up there as well because I because I like the way, obviously, he wouldn't he would be struggling these days because he wasn't the best with his feet. But around that time, that was obviously a completely different style of play. I'd put him in, in the fourth place. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I, I could get behind that list. Um, yeah. Excellent. Lovely. Tim, it's been an absolute pleasure. Really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, enjoyed it as um, well, mate. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have to get you back on sometime. Um, percent and hopefully, you know, maybe towards the the end of the season, we can have, um, you know, we can be celebrating a promotion together hopefully. or something like that and um, a great season. So, listen, have a great St. Patrick's Day. Thank um, you. Too, enjoy mate. the gym and we'll, do. Uh, we'll touch base soon. Will do. All Thank right. you so much, mate. Bye, Tim. Have a good Bye. one. Bye.